There are two terms that are related to weeds that you will hear a lot when we're talking about um, weeds that are of concern in Idaho, and one of those is invasive and the other is noxious. Now, we're going to be spending our time today on noxious weeds, but it's important, I think, to understand the difference between the two terms. Um, invasive weeds are harmful, uh, non-native plants that damage the economy and the environment. Essentially, they are plants that are growing where they were not native. And uh, there's a couple of examples here that you're looking at, uh, cheatgrass on the, on the left and jointed goat grass on the right. Um, I think it's safe to say that all noxious weeds are invasive, but not all invasive weeds are classified as noxious. For example, both cheatgrass and jointed goat grass would be considered noxious uh, or uh, invasive. However, um, only jointed goat grass is on the state's noxious weed list. So when we look at noxious weeds, Understand that noxious weeds is a legal definition, and there are federal noxious weed lists and state noxious weed lists, and some weeds are also classified noxious in individual counties, which may not be um, on the state noxious weed list. But that definition um, in the code is any plant having the potential to cause injury to public health, crops, livestock, land, or other property and which is designated as noxious by the director of the Department of Agriculture. And so there's a couple of examples here that we're looking at. For example, Iberian star thistle. Um, it's considered noxious because it's toxic to horses. Um, and this is one of those that once it gets started, it can spread rapidly and uh, be difficult to control. Uh, another is Turkish thistle. Um, this one is on the... Uh, on the uh, noxious weed list. This is an annual and the first uh, finding, first identification of this in North America was in Idaho in the uh, Pitt Pittsburgh Landing area. And uh, there's also a small patch uh, across the river um, in on the Oregon side uh, in Hell's Canyon. Now what that tells you before I move on, when, when a weed that's never been found somewhere all of a sudden shows up, especially at a recreational area like that, that tells us that that was probably brought in from, um, from somewhere. And um, that's how those things kind of get started. And we'll talk about that uh, as the days goes on. So what does Idaho law say is the landowner responsibility? And I think this is really important because I'm pretty well... Um, convinced that most landowners, if they are not involved in production agriculture, understand that the noxious weeds on their property is their legal responsibility to control. Uh, I see all over, and I live in an acreage subdivision, and I see rush skeleton weed and um, diffuse and spotted nap weed that are, that are kind of taking over, and people don't even seem to be concerned about it. So at any rate, Idaho code says that uh, it shall be the duty and responsibility of all landowners to control noxious weeds on their land and property in accordance with this chapter, that's the Idaho, Idaho code, and with rules promulgated by the director of the Department of Ag. The cost of controlling noxious weeds shall be the obligation of the landowner. Noxious weed control must be for prevention, eradication, rehabilitation, control or containment efforts. However, areas may be modified from the eradication requirement if the homeowner is a participant in a county approved weed management plan or county approved cooperative weed management area. Now that all sounds well and good, except for what we know is that most landowners, again, unless they're really involved in agriculture or some profession where weeds are kind of what they do, they don't even know what they have on their properties. So they don't even know that they have these noxious weeds and these patches kind of get out of control. I would also throw in here for landowners that all the county weed superintendents that I have ever dealt with would much rather work with you in an educational um, situation rather than having to come in as an enforcement situation. And they are more than willing to come and help 
control and take care of these noxious weeds. And for their benefit also, because they would rather get these, these uh, weeds under control in small patches when they can, rather than when they get to be countywide and the uh, chances for controlling and eradication have pretty much gone out the window. So, you know, if you have a weed that you don't know what it is, bring it into your local extension office, get a hold of your county weed superintendent, have them come and take a look. There are resources out there to help you do this and uh, can also make recommendations for how to get those weeds under control on your property as well. This one that you're looking at here is black henbane. It's on the weed list because it's uh, toxic to humans and livestock. And um, it's found in, uh, in Idaho and Clearwater counties in the northern part of the state. And it's found across the southern part of the state as well. Interestingly, this summer, I had the first uh, one of these brought in um, that someone didn't know what it was. And uh, they had actually picked it somewhere else because it was pretty. And uh, how often county weed superintendents who are on this do you find someone said, oh, well, I thought it was so pretty, so I dug it up and brought it home and planted it. You know, I've, I have seen that. So landowner and citizen duties continued. The landowner shall reimburse the county control authority for work done because of failure to comply with a five-day notice as outlined in section 22.2405 of Idaho Code. Now, this, this is a situation where a superintendent has gone out, notified a landowner that they have a problem that they need to take care of, and the landowner doesn't do anything by code, that county's weed superintendent has the authority to enter that property to control that noxious weed problem and then charge the um, charge that landowner back for taking care of that. Now, again, every weed superintendent I have ever dealt with would much rather work with you cooperatively in an educational situation rather than in an enforcement situation where they have to come in and enter your property and uh, take care of that. We were, I had a, had a um, pesticide applicator seminar uh, a week or so ago and had one of the local weed superintendents given a presentation and they showed a picture of this range, private range area that had just been absolutely taken over by scotch thistle. And the landowner didn't even know it was there. And so they started working cooperatively to try and get that under control. So if an article is infested with noxious weeds, it shall not be moved from designated premises until it is treated in accordance with the applicable rules or in accordance with the written permission of the control authority. And infested um, articles would be things like, you know, vehicles, equipment, tractors, those kinds of things, anything that would transport that weed seed off-site and somewhere else. And you know, we know a lot of these weeds get moved around by livestock, uh, consuming the seeds and then getting transported to other pastures or other range. They defecate those seeds out and away those noxious weeds go. What you're looking at here, um, there we go, is a scotch broom. It's a perennial woody shrub, it will grow up to 10 feet tall, um, found mostly in Northern Idaho. And it's under the statewide control category. And we're going to talk briefly about what the different categories of noxious weeds, um, why, they're, why they're listed in different categories. Okay, the first of those is statewide early detection rapid response. And these are weeds that have been um, newly identified or newly found in an area the patches are still small enough where there's an opportunity to completely eradicate that weed from the landscape and uh, keep it from spreading to uh, other places in Idaho. What you're looking at here, um, oh, excuse me, the plants must be reported to the Department of Ag within 10 days of being identified um, by either the University of Idaho or other qualified authority approved by the Department of Ag. Uh, the eradication must begin in the same season they are found. In Idaho, there are 20 species on this list, 10 are aquatic and 10 are terrestrial. And those can be found at this link, um, which takes you to the uh, Idaho invasive um, species 
website. This first one on the top here that you're looking at, Brazilian Elodia. This was introduced from aquariums and people get tired of their fish or their fish die and they don't know what to do with the aquarium. So they dump them in a pond, dump them in a creek, dump them in a lake, dump them in a river. And uh, that's how we get these kinds of things introduced. This other one, tall hawkweed at the bottom, it's a perennial. And uh, we do have some native hawkweeds in Idaho. Uh, identification of the various hawkweeds becomes difficult, but these um, non-natives can take over rangeland and they can um, reduce the, the grazing quality of those, of those rangelands. And uh, we've seen that with some other weeds as well. The next category is statewide control. These are noxious weeds that um, already exist generally in several parts throughout the state, but they're not statewide yet. And in some areas, generally where they've been transported from one to the other, the patches of those weeds are still small enough. There's, there's an opportunity to eradicate those. Um, chances of getting overall statewide control becomes slim, but um, there is a possibility with coordinated management uh, on that. So here we're looking at Viper's bug loss at the top. Um, that one has uh, alkaloids that are toxic to horses and swine. Uh, it's a winter annual or a biennial. Interestingly, this year I had the first call on this one and it was actually from a rancher in Northern Nevada who had it and they were uh, looking for some uh, for some control opportunity to get rid of it. And it was kind of one of those things they didn't even know they had it and they kind of rode back up into some um, distant pasture that they had and found that this was kind of taking off and they wanted to get it controlled before it got away from them. And the other one there, Buffalo Burr on the bottom, um, that one is located in several places in both Northern and Southern Idaho. I have seen a couple of examples of it, but fortunately it's not too widespread, at least uh, in in a lot of areas here in southern Idaho um, where I've been. Okay, this next category, statewide containment. The idea is to try to at least contain uh, some of these on here. I don't know. Um, we'll talk about those. These, these exist pretty widespread throughout the state. New or small infestations can be reduced or elim eliminated, but in general, the idea is to try to contain the known patches that are there, what you're looking at here. That top one there, Oxide Daisy. Um, I started my extension career up in Valley County, and this was a real problem in Valley County. It reduced the uh, grazing uh, quality uh, and stocking rate of the private pastures, thus reducing the value of those pastures. And uh, that, one, that one is a problem. Poison hemlock is located pretty much statewide, highly toxic plant. Um, all parts of that plant are toxic. And uh, I know situations where um, people have gone in and they've, they've, they've eradicated their, they've controlled the plant, sprayed it or killed it. And then they've come in and dug out ditches and exposed those roots and livestock will graze on those roots. All parts of this plant are toxic and can cause some real problems. Spotted knapweed um, there. In, in the bottom corner, it's a, a biennial. It uh, spreads rapidly. It, uh, my experience here in Southern Idaho is it does very well coming in behind range fire. It and its buddy rush skeleton weed, which is not on here, seem to do really well behind fire and they're difficult to control. And then the last one there, Scotch thistle, that one's pretty well widespread in Southern Idaho. Um, I think pretty well throughout uh, Northern Idaho as well, but of course I'm less familiar with Northern Idaho. But this one will take over range and pastures. And what's interesting to me is it's, you know, when it first appears, it's so easy to control, but people just seem to let it go until it becomes these huge patches that give uh, county weed superintendents fits trying to control that stuff. And kind of getting close to the wrap, to the end here, there are prohibited genre, and these are plants which are not allowed in the state. Um, and these will come in, you know, sometimes these can come in through um, lawn and garden stores that bring in things, or um, other times they can come in in contamination in birdseed and those types of things. Um, 
So um, there may be species found in Idaho that are within the prohibited genre, um, and those populations must be controlled and eradicated. And again, if you see something that pops up on your property and you don't know what it is, get that thing identified because these can be uh, real problems. Now, and what you're looking at here are some species. These are all Fabaceae and they're related to Scotch broom. And these are ones that uh, you know we really don't want to get started within the state. So 